So I'm going to walk and talk you through creating your assignment for this. So what I've got open is I've got an example assignment and on the back of the uh, diary, but it's also within the assignment page is all of the criteria that you're supposed to be meeting. So it's not rocket science what we're, what we're, how we mark the assignments. So we're going to mark the assignments using this, this table we've got here. Um, so I suggest you use this the, this table as well um, in checking that you've you've done everything and make sure everything's in there and alongside the assignment brief. Now, one of the things you are supposed to do as well when you submit your assignment is you're supposed to on uh, on the submission sheet is identify where you're meeting each of the criteria. Uh, that would be very very useful if you fill that in because there's no particular order that you need to submit any of this information. What would also be useful. Um, because we're going to be using one of these, is if you can highlight on, on this sheet as well um, where you have met each of the criteria, so whether it's on one page, on page one, two, three, whatever, or maybe in the diary. So that would be useful. Okay, right, so let's get going with this, and I'll try and, if I think of any other information as I go along, I'll just uh, randomly call it out. So to... So to help you have, have uh, put this example piece of coursework, this is an example piece of coursework from another centre. Now it's not perfect, this is a cut and shut assignment from an old unit, so it does miss out some of the criteria, but it certainly gives you an idea, a bit of a flavour, taster of the um, style of the assignment and what sort of things to put in there. But I'll go along and, uh, go as we go along. So the first thing you need to do to meet the criteria is design a single-sided PCB and produce the artwork. So we need to see an image of from Circuit Wizard of uh, your circuit and the steps that you went through it in, uh, or some of the steps that you went in, into producing producing the artwork. Okay, so we've got so, you know got a picture of the PCB here. Um, help. Um, and then we've got some of the steps that you went through and also some of the changes that you also uh, went through. Now, sometimes it repeats itself with what we've got to put in. Um, uh, so one of the next criteria is, is show how you've taken into account heat management. There, were, there, weren't, there wasn't any heat management issues, but some, I know some of you decided to move some components around. So you can say that you decided to move components around to, to avoid heat. Or if there were, was some heat management issues, then you might move component, you might move components around. You might make some tracks uh, thicker. You might have used a heat sink. Uh, you might have used a fan. So you can say what you might have done if there were any heat management issues. Um, identifying the fixing points. So if we were then going to take our PCB and then put it into some sort of case uh, to, to form some sort of function, then how would we fix it into that case? Would we just glue it in? Would we uh, create um, so, uh, four holes and uh, a bit of insulator and then, and then screw it into place? Well, how would we fix it into place? Okay, so this is a bit of a hangover from the from the last assignment. Um, where have we got on here so show how you've tried to Im to improve your design and why so we already actually did some improvements to the circuit in the in the making process so we made sure that the if because um, the capacitor we actually drew out wasn't an electrolytic but it needed to be electrolytic so we had to change the size on the printer circuit board to two and a half mil we changed the track isolation gap so that um, it, uh, tracks weren't too close so it made it slightly easier for soldering um, and there were some other changes to, that we did uh, also some of the later circuits that we we actually did it uh, did two passes on the etching process again to make that uh, the gap between tracks a, a lot better okay so so we've already done some improvements onto the circuit and you can say why those improvements now circuit wizard is going to give you a bill of materials so all of the capacitors uh, the values of the capacitors the values of the resistors and the five for five so we're just in a nice little table there from circuit wizard and you're going to simulate the circuit on circuit wizard to produce a specification now i've already said what um what i want as a bare minimum bare minimum on the specification so there's a bare minimum 
because uh, this is what, what what your purpose of your specification is, is that you need to have some information in a table so that you can test against your PCB. So here we can, we've can got um, the light level you can see when I, um, on simulate, I've clicked on the LDR and the light level is really high and um, I've got about seven, uh, 700 millivolts there on pin four, uh, which is coming from my light sensor, the so bright light. If I then change the light level, start going from bright light, um, bright light down to normal room uh, room brightness, then the voltage then increases from 700, and increases from 700, and we should see. There we go. The LED is going to flash. Um, when the voltage increases from 700 millivolts in there. Uh, so you need to then also, so, so we need to know what, so you need a t in the table, the voltage measurements, two voltage measurements, effectively light and dark, uh, but it's gonna be bright light and normal room brightness, uh, because one of the improvements that we will need to make to the, into the circuit, which comes, I'll talk about later on, is this value of this resistor is too big. Um, and so then the second measurement, minimum measurement you need to do is on the timing. How long is the LED on and off for? Now there is a 505 uh, timer page on Firefly there that will tell you the formula to work out, which is the relationship of these resistors and the capacitor there. Now some of you haven't got 100 microfarads in your circuit, so you just need to um, doctor that to be, if you haven't got 100 microfarads in your circuit. It's not a problem. Um, that's what it's going to be. Now the degrees of your circuit working that we're happy with, if you're just a pass candidate, then your circuit doesn't have to work in any shape or form. You just have to have gone through the making, the making of the circuit. Okay, uh, and this is just something that we're gonna talk about. I'll talk about again later in the video. But if you are merit and above, then your circuit has to work to some degree. Ideally it should work fully, um, but maybe, um, Maybe it's say as a pass candidate, your circuit's not working because when you put your voltmeter on pin eight, um, it reads zero volts because you're shorting your circuit out. Your, 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 nine, your nine volts coming in on pin eight is being shorted out to the zero volts, so you've got nothing there. Um, but when you t but for merit and distinction candidates, you should be testing your circuit and maybe you've got a voltage there on your light sensor. Even though nothing's happening with your LED, you can see that the light sensor element of your circuit is working, so there's a fault elsewhere. Okay. Okay, so well, that's our, our specification. So we've, we've simulated our circuit and produced a table there. So we're now into P6, so we're making the circuit. So under P6, um, under P6, we should have some photos to, with headings to show what our manufacturing process is. So you might repeat the photos there of generating the artwork, and then you might then have, so you, um, you cut PC, the copper board, and then going through the etching process, for the etching process, talking about what's going on with the etching process, and then drilling it out, soldering it, and then finally finishing off with the testing. Okay, so that's, some headings with, with photos to show what um, the manufacturing process. Pre-assembly quality control check. So the things you might check before you then start as assembling it, which links into identification of components. Um, so you might have checked the circuit board to make sure that everything was wired up correctly and you hadn't actually designed it incorrectly because uh, I know some of you have designed it incorrectly so things wouldn't work. So you might have checked the, uh, you might have checked the quality of the tracks to make sure that the chat tracks were okay so you're doing all these visual observations identification of the components is you might have then look, made looking to get you get your 10ks and your 4.7ks and making sure that you've got all of those and you haven't mixed them all up and you haven't got all the same kinds of resistors polarity and patience and components there's two components that we need to make sure that we connect the right way around so that's going to be the ic and the capacitor okay and then we need some evidence of our soldering uh, and soldering so we can see how good we are at our soldering and placing of components so that should be a nice little picture there of your finished board and then that goes with their the, the finished board that you've trimmed the legs off you haven't got uh, lots of danglies coming in there 
for the merit for the manufacturing we are looking for neat solder joints now we're not looking for complete neat solder joints um, some of this will be covered off with the uh, with the manufacturing declaration uh, declaration form that we sign so when you submit your assignment you should have a photograph of the form that we sign to say that you have completed the uh, practical element of making the PCB uh, and so on and so forth so without that the assignment is useless so you need that form in the assignment from uh, which is signed from us so like i say we're not looking for complete uh, neat solder joints uh, but if you did make a bit of a hash of it then you need to to really to make sure that you can um, attain the m3 will need you to, to to reflect on on how and why and where wherefores of how you can make your solder joints better and obviously like i've said a few minutes ago about the working circuit and the tested circuits so as a minimum we need you to test the light sensor and the timing of the led on and off but you might have tested the the voltage on pin 8 and pin 1 to see that the power supply is going in or and it's not going or it's not going in you know it's shorted out and so on and so forth so that's our m3 marks happy days okay so i've i've closed off the the assignment there you can refer to the assignment as much if you want to but i'll just talk about this these aspects of these uh, these criteria um because like i say what we're going to do is when we mark this is we're going to be ticking off to make sure that you've co you've covered off all of these aspects um so your risk assessment so you need to have a risk assessment now we did this uh, for the most part as a lead up to the assignment so you did a risk assessment on soldering and the risk assessment on the manufacturing process so that just needs to be included as part of the assignment but you also need to say how you applied the risk assessment so you know what did you do as part of your activity did you, you make sure you um, put your goggles on did you make sure you use the heat mat um, did you have to get reminded um, you know there's no harm in saying you know what you've learned from this so how did you apply that risk assessment if you burnt your finger did you run it under the tap um whatever else has applied and then so what skills did you use in making in making uh, the pcb how what skill what what did you have to do um to make the pcb you know was it the filing was it um some analysis was it uh, dexterity in holding the soldering iron uh, whatever that might be but and then when, when we're into p8 which can, can lead on to it is you know how could you improve on your skills so certainly for the soldering aspect if, you, if you're not doing a great job on your soldering how could you improve on that could you have a clean soldering iron can you make sure the soldering iron is coming up to temperature could you make sure the tracks are take more care in your soldering um, Uh, and so and so forth so uh, um, if you've been filling out the diary then you will have had a plan but even if you didn't fill out the diary you know in, in did it go did did the whole process go to go according to plan or did you have to make several pcbs did you have to come to implement intervention sessions um did you have to rewire things because you forgot to to put, um, connect things up or you'd, you'd actually double connected things up on your circuit which you know which then again leads on to this m4 what's good about your design you know was it nice clear and simple that you um some a couple of you you, know, you sold it up first time and it all worked because um because your design was fully thought through but you know what could be improved on the circuit well like I've, i said on the light sensor that 4.7k is a bit of a bit of a big big resistor for the light sensor it needs to be a bit smaller so that um it's the light sensor would be um, would allow the 555 A stable to be off at, at room brightness and then to come on in darkness. At the moment, it's it, you know it, it will be on at normal brightness. So something there to 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 talk about. Or there might be other things that you can improve improve on. Uh, and then we're finally on to the distinction criteria. So you're, you're refining your development, and it's putting all of the things, all of the things together for the whole of this unit. You know, so what have you learned in designing a PCB for the whole of this unit? You know, from from how industry does it to designing the PCBs to how you designed it, and what ways 
what you can take forward if some if you were to be interviewed on designing a PCB, um, what would you say about it? And the same would apply to then to the making process of the PCB. You know, is it slightly different to what you thought it was going to be to to how, to how you researched an assignment too to the making of the PCB, or was this uh, or did you it follows or a similar sort of pattern? Uh, lessons learned from soldering. I think we've probably talked about that. That so you need to have. There's a good good further point there to add in on there, and then and then we've got the lessons learned from planning and implementing the manufacture. So, you know, when you planned it all out, did it all work to plan? Did you have to come to um, to the intervention sessions? 